Bunnies and fairies, oh my. Bunnies and fairies, oh my. Well, actually, Ted, the Haragons, really. Let us talk about the new races from the beyond the witch light for 5e d and I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome to Nerdarchy. Four Nards, by Nards. Well, let's hop and flutter on into this video. All right, so we're going to get two new races that you get to explore, the Haragons and the Fairies, um, which we kind of saw a little bit these of these on, on Arthur Arcana. Uh, now, before you even kind of get to the races, they kind of have a section that they kind of combine for both of them that applies to both of them called Creating Your Character. Um, and it just basically, you know, in all the books since Tasha's College and everything, when there's a new race, it's like ability scores, do whatever you want. Like if you want to put a plus two in something and a plus one in something, you know, you just pick and choose. They just can't paint the same stat or you can put three plus ones wherever you want. So you have some options. And of course you cannot go over the, above the 20 threshold as per normal. You know, languages, you know, you get common and one other that your DM feels appropriate for the character. Uh, creature type, uh, they have a little sidebar about that. Uh, and then lifespan, typical lifespan of a player character in D&D. Multiverse is about a century, assuming the character doesn't meet a violent end on adventure. Members of some races, such as dwarves, elves, can live for centuries. Fairies and haragons, however, have a lifespan of about a century. So I don't know if that's going to be new from now on. It's like, you're a race uh, player character, about 100 years. <laughs> Unless you die. Uh, it, it's weird considering we have uh, races that are small or small and uh, small and or medium. Uh, you know, height and weight player characters, regardless of race, typically fall in the same range of height and weight that humans have in our world. If you'd like to determine your character height randomly, consult the chart in the player's handbook. Uh, choose a row in the table that best represents the build for your character. Yeah, so whether you're, if you're playing something small or something that's medium size, you would just kind of take a look at that. Uh, before we go any further and jump into the uh, the specifics of the race and kind of give our feedback on what we think about them, just want to take a moment to thank our sponsor and friend, XP to Level 3, Jacob Buds, uh, is actually a bud of ours, <laughs> uh, has a new Kickstarter out, Crescent... Quest O Namakon, and it is doing stupendous. Uh, it's well earned. Uh, Jacob works so hard. His, vo his videos are so funny, and he is such an awesome dungeon master. Well, now you can infuse that right into your game via his Kickstarter. So, the Quest O Namakon is a compendium of adventures chronicled by Saronomius, uh, an animated skeleton with a knack for sudden and painful demise. Explore 10 different stories and 30 different adventures as you sample Saronomius' favorite epics and tales. The stories held in the tome are customizable, so whether you're a group with years of experience or a new GM looking to in introduce some friends to 5th edition, there's something for everyone in the Quest O Namakon. You'll find five different themes to choose from, featuring two different first-level one-shot stories that can be extended to levels two and three with further games. Whether it's fighting an evil dragon to save a city, planning a cunning train heist in the Wild West, or taking to the high seas to track down lost treasure, adventures you will find within these pages are many and varied. Choose between two villains that change the flavor and design of each story. Does a party of ghost hunters face a necromancer or a hag? Does a posse of Wild West characters face an infamous outlaw and his goblin henchmen or demons summoned by an insane mage? Or does a group of shipwrecked survivors face the face fey or shadow creatures? The choice is yours. But this thing has got so much stuff packed in there. It's crazy. You've got miniatures. You've got pawns. You've got special dice boxes. You've got special dice bags. You've got a special dice. You've got GM screens. You've got little little trinkety objects. There's all kinds of options for every kind of gamer that, that's out there. You can get the PDF. You can get the regular book. You can get a special edition cover if, if you go in at the, at the mega tier. This Kickstarter is already doing phenomenal. There's loads of backers in there. So join in the crew that is already a part of this and get yours now. Link down in the description, of course. So if you want to support Nerdarchy in another way, uh, to help keep making videos like this one, as well as the articles over on nerdarchy.com, you can head over to Patreon and support us there. As a special thank you, you'll receive 5e rewards for both players and DMs alike every month. You're, we make magic items, feats, spells, races, subclasses, 
print and play magic item cards, drop in encounters, and so much more. Even a chance to game with a nerdarchy. You can find a link down in the description. Also, one of these cards to take a to go get a free uh, download sample to see what we're doing over there. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna dive on into the wild beyond the witchlight for the fairy. The Fey Wild is home to many fantastic peoples, including fairies. Fairies are a wee folk, but not nearly as so much as their pixie or spite friends. The first fairies spoke elvish, goblin, or sylvan, and encounters with human visitors prompted many of them to learn common as well. Infused with the magic of the Fey Wild, most fairies look like small elves with insectile wings, but each fairy has a special physical characteristic that sets the fairy apart. For your fairy, roll on the fairy characteristic table or choose an option from it. You're also free to come up with your own characteristics if none of the suggestions below fit your character. And you have things like, the wings are, are like those of a bird, you are a shimmering multicolored skin, you have exceptionally large ears, a glittering mist constantly surrounds you, you have a small spectral horn on your forehead like that of a unicorn, your legs are insectile, you smell like fresh brownies, and a noticeable harmless chill surrounds you. We also have fairy traits. As a fairy, you have the following racial traits. Creature type, you are a fae. Your size is small. Your speed, uh, your walking speed is 30 feet. Fairy magic, you know the druid craft cantrip. Starting at third level, you can cast a fairy fire spell with this trait. Starting at fifth level, you can also cast the enlarge reduce spell with this trait. Once you use fairy fire or enlarge reduce with this trait, you can't cast the spell with it again until you finish a long rest. You can cast either of those spells using any spell slots you have of the appropriate level. Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells. When you cast them with this trait, choose when you select this race. We're also going to get flight because of your wings. You have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. You can't use this flying speed if you're wearing medium or heavy armor. So there's a couple of things going on here, right? We're getting a bunch of spells to just add to our spell list if we're already a caster. But not only that, we're getting really good spells, which is always awesome. Um, and in, you know, in addition to that, we have flight. And uh, it very specifically calls out your walking speed. So if you happen to pick a race like monks or barbarians that have higher walking speeds, that means your flying speed is going to be higher as well. Mobility feat would apply as well to make you faster. Yeah, so that, that is something that, like, I really want them to go back and fix our croaker now. Because, like, we've seen all of these races now that are getting a flight speed. And all of this other stuff, you know, whereas the our croaker is like, yeah, you get flight. Isn't that enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they, they kind of get boned on that a little bit. So all in all, this is pretty good. You, you get a nice mix of things. Um, and also, like, with the flight, if you have something that increases your walking speed like haste, um, like a magic item, technically that would also increase your flying speed. 100%. Because it doesn't say anything about modifiers or anything. So Correct. Correct. just because your feet move faster, I guess your wings do as well. Uh, so maybe we may have fleet of wing. <laughs> All right. So now we're looking at the Harangon. Uh, Harangons originated in the Fey wild where they spoke Selvan and embodied the spirit of freedom and travel. In time, these rabbit folk hopped into other worlds, bringing the Fey realms exuberance with them and learning new languages as they went. Harangons, are bipedal with a characteristic long feet of rabbits they resemble and fur in a variety of colors. They share the keen senses and powerful legs of leoprene creatures and are full of energy, like a wound up spring. Herringons are blessed with a little fey luck and often find themselves a few fortunate feet away from dangers during their adventures. Uh, so, you know, your Harrigan, your creature type is you are humanoid. This is an interesting one because size, you are medium or small. You choose the size when you select this race. Speed, your walking speed is 30 feet. Hair trigger, you add your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls. Leperine senses, you have proficiency in the perception skill. Lucky footwork, when you fail a dexterity saving throw, you can use your reaction to roll a d4 and add it to the save, potentially turning the failure into a success. You can't use this reaction if you are prone or your speed is zero. Rabbit hop. As a bonus action, you can jump a number of feet equal to five times your proficiency bonus without provoking opportunity attacks. You can use this trait only if your speed is greater than zero. You can use it a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and your gain all expected uses when you 
finish a long rest. Uh, this is super cool, right? Because you can kind of use that to get out of danger. I mean, even at the lower levels, it's still 10 feet. That's that's generally far enough so you don't provoke attacks of opportunity to then use your speed to kind of get away. So you can get into and out of combat much easier, making you very nimble. Yeah, and it's a bonus action. So like when you get to those higher levels, this is like, bam, I just jump 30 feet and then I'll just move my 30 feet. Uh, so you kind of have that little bit of a move action um, you know, so it's definitely, definitely a lot of fun. You know, the lucky footwork, it's anytime you fail a deck save, as long as you've got your reaction, you, you can add that D4. So if you're not, if you're not a character that's used to using your reaction, this is, this is going to work out well for you. Getting your bonus, getting your proficiency bonus on initiative rolls, like right from the start, that's a, a pretty good thing. Typically only bards, you know, get the, uh, you know, the, you know, to get add, add get to add half their proficiency mod with their jack of all trades, yeah, and so. then the you know fighter champion also with remarkable athlete. So this is great, especially for like I love it for pretty much anyone would benefit from it, except for bards and that one subclass. So that's super useful. You know, one of the things in the adventure I really love, and I don't know why this amuses me so much, is the fact that they have you know some of the NPCs are Harrigans and and some of them are evil, and just the idea of evil bunny bunny people. People just amuses me. I don't know why. This would definitely be a fun race to introduce to your game and to play. Uh, also, like some of the things I start thinking about right away, like what about like ogres and giants? Do they look for these guys for their feet because they think they're lucky? <laughs> right? Like that could be like a whole adventure in itself. Yeah, you I mean you could you could have uh, you know herringons that are being hunted, you know, for that reason by the the larger giants or the larger monsters, you know, trolls, ogres, giants, you know, on the on the lower end like hill giants. Um, you know, depending upon where in the in the power level you wanna you wanna have this adventure, and you know, just as NPCs, I think they're they're definitely a lot of a lot of fun to be able to use. And then from the PC standpoint, there's so many different directions you can go. <clears throat> samurai, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for a, a particular um, samurai, is it Usagi Yojimbo? Usagi, Usagi Yojimbo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is awesome. So I think these races are a great addition uh, to the game. Uh, both of them are really cool. You have the t you know the typical fairies opposed to a you know, you know, sprite or pixie type character, and also they're not too powerful, but they add a nice to it. And again, I'm in love with that those spells that they add to you, you know, add to your list. Absolutely, a lot, a lot of things that you can play with these characters. A lot of options for how you want to play them. Question is, is you know, what do you guys think? Yeah, would you use them in your game? Are you using them in your game? Which one is your favorite? Let us know down in the comments below and share your thoughts with the Nerdarchy community. While you're down there, don't forget to do all those cool things like like, share, subscribe, even go ahead and click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Quick reminder, we drop new videos here on the channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so come on back. Can't wait till then. No worries, we got you covered. Check out new D&D backgrounds for 5e from the Beyond the Witchlight. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.